what was meant to be another remarkable chapter in his extraordinary journey, took an unexpected turn, claiming the life of professional surfer Michaela Jones. Join us as we uncover the details of Jones's final ride, revealing the tragic and mysterious incident that unfolded beneath the ocean's surface and answering the questions that surround his untimely demise. Michaela Jones was born in 1979 in Oahu, Hawaii. Raised on the legendary east side of Oahu, he nurtured his love for surfing from a young age, honing his skills in the waves. At the tender age of eight, Jones embarked on his surfing journey, captivated by the allure of the ocean. Soon after, he ventured into the competitive realm, joining the 12 and under Menahuna age group where his skills began to shine. As an amateur, he proved his determination by securing victory in not just one, but two national championships, showcasing his remarkable talent and dedication to the sport. At the age of 16, Jones entered the Triple Crown, the longest running and most prestigious surf event in history. Embracing a life of constant motion, he found himself rushing from one contest to another, driven by an insatiable desire to seek out the perfect waves. His wanderlust led him deep into the heart of South America and Africa, disappearing into the jungles to track down waves. So many trips I can't even remember, Jones said. I've got them all written down in journals somewhere. My mom told me to do that. I'm glad I did. Passionate about preserving the natural world, he actively engaged himself in diverse conservation projects. His commitment to safeguarding the oceans and marine life became a driving force in his life, earning him recognition as an advocate for environmental protection. Beyond his environmental pursuits, Jones found love and happiness in his personal life. He is happily married and blessed with two children who share his profound love for surfing. Together, they form a family that cherishes both the serenity of nature and the thrill of riding the waves. His insatiable thirst for adventure led him to seek out remote and uncharted surf breaks across the globe. Renowned for his fearless spirit and mastery in barrel riding, he carved a name for himself in the surfing community. He attracted the attention of sponsors such as Reef, GoPro, Dragon and Channel Islands, allowing him to venture to surf hotspots like Tahiti, Fiji, South Africa and the Galapagos Islands. His exceptional talent and daring approach to the sport earned him well-deserved recognition, gracing the pages of numerous surf magazines and leaving an indelible mark in captivating films like Intersection, Castles in the Sky, and Modern Collective. Each wave he conquered showcased the sheer artistry of his moves, solidifying his reputation as a true surfing luminary. In the 1990s, Jones took his passion for surfing and photography to new heights when he began experimenting with taking first-person images of himself on the water. He ingeniously attached a Canon 7D inside a water housing on the nose of his board, pinning it down with his chin, making a one-handed drop, and then skillfully maneuvered the camera to take incredible shots from behind. Later, he embraced the emergence of lightweight GoPro cameras, giving us breathtaking 360-degree views of his surf sessions, and he quickly became a sponsored ambassador for the company. Michaela is one of the best barrel filmers we've ever worked with, says GoPro's creative director Bradford Schmidt. It's not just how much time he spends in the barrel, but how conscious he is of the angles, the water drops, and the exact shot he's getting. Jones's breathtaking photographs captured the hearts of countless admirers on social media, where he gathered a significant following. His images often showcased his incredible surfing skills as he fearlessly rode inside massive waves, leaving viewers in awe of his courage. At the time of his untimely passing, he had garnered more than 50,000 devoted Instagram followers, a testament to the captivating beauty he brought to the world through his lens. Some of his photos were beyond spectacular, like the one on the cover of the Surfer's Journal, where he's seen in a wave tube with his arm outstretched, creating a mirror-like effect. It's no wonder photographers like Woody Woodworth praised him for his exceptional skills. He was a humble artist. His pictures were incredible, said his father, John Jones. The love for surfing photography ran deep in the Jones family, with John Jones himself being a surf photographer during the vibrant era of the 1970s. He knew all the pros, and they'd drop by the Jones house often, creating an atmosphere of companionship and shared enthusiasm for the waves. Despite Macala Jones' constant quest to find the best waves and chase them across the globe, he remained acutely aware of the inherent dangers that came with his unwavering passion for surfing. On one occasion, he encountered a near-drowning experience that led to a profound out-of-body encounter. 
In the midst of his daring ride, disaster struck as his rail caught, abruptly slapping him down on the face. The impact resulted in a burst eardrum, throwing off his equilibrium and leaving him disoriented, unsure of which direction to swim towards the surface. Reflecting on the harrowing experience, he recalled, When I finally followed my leash, the whole sky was spinning around. That's right when the next wave landed on me and I blacked out. In that moment, Jones found himself in an ethereal state, as if soaring through the heavens, gazing down upon his physical body, floating amidst the vast ocean. I'm looking down at myself underwater, and I hear my daughter's voice calling out to me, Daddy, come home! Next thing I knew, I was standing up on dry reef. Miraculously, he made it back home safely, and the day his eardrum healed, he went back to the exact same wave. Soon after meeting his wife Emma on Bali, where he moved in the early 2000s, Jones gave up contest surfing. From his porch, staring out at the waves, there is nothing else in the world. He plays with his daughters and surfs two or three times a day. There are no desks or offices, no freeways or factories, just surfing. It's like a disease, but when you pull up at a spot you've been researching and the swell is there, the wind is right, and you're about to paddle out to empty perfection, that's what it's all about. That's where I get my fix. I love the travel, I love the surfing, but right at the point where the two come together, for me, that's the best moment. That's what I keep chasing. On July 9th, 2023, during a trip to the Mentawai Islands off the western coast of Sumatra, tragedy struck. Surrounded by fellow surfers, including his nephew, Jones eagerly awaited the arrival of waves, ready to immerse himself in the water. Among the sets that rolled in, an impressive eight-foot wave caught his attention. With patience and determination, he positioned himself skillfully to ride the wave, aiming for the powerful tube at its heart. He got the wave, pulling into the barrel, the tube, and he did not make it. The wave closed out, according to Aymar Abalera, the owner of the resort the family was staying. Suddenly I received a call, he said. Jones had been injured. Despite the seriousness of the situation, Jones remained remarkably calm, alerting the people in the water that he believed he had cut his artery. With more waves approaching, four individuals in the water assisted him, but he had to navigate two more waves on his own. To minimize the risk of further impact, he removed the leash from his board and managed to get through the waves. Eventually, Jones was brought ashore by board and boat. He was rushed to a nearby hospital about six miles away where he was in critical condition, barely breathing and unconscious. Despite the efforts of the medical staff, including the use of a tourniquet made from the surfboard leash and a piece of wood, oxygen and chest compressions, they were unable to save him. The severe, four-inch cut in his femoral artery, a large blood vessel in the thigh, had caused him to lose a significant amount of blood in the water, leaving little chance for recovery. We stayed one hour trying to make him alive, Abilera said, but fate had a different plan. Jones died at the age of 44. According to surf photographer Woody Woodworth, cuts from surfboard fins are a frequent occurrence. Some surfers prefer to maintain sharp fins as they believe it aids in precise wave riding. However, Woodworth warns that a fin's sharpness, combined with the power of the wave, can be likened to that of an axe or a cleaver. All the fins that I see are certainly sharp enough and pointy enough that with the force of the wave slicing into somebody's leg would be very easy, Woodworth said. The sudden and tragic death of Jones sent shockwaves through the surfing community, leaving friends, fans, and fellow surfers in disbelief and mourning. Known for his adventurous spirit, breathtaking photography, and exceptional surfing skills, Jones was an icon in the surfing world, and his untimely demise has left a profound impact on those who admired him. Following Jones's untimely passing, his daughter Isabella Jones expressed her heartfelt emotions in a touching tribute on Instagram. Alongside a photo of a young Isabella and her dad, she wrote, I'm in so much disbelief right now, this doesn't feel real. I love you so much, Dad, and I wish I could give you one last hug. I wish you were still here with us. You weren't supposed to leave yet. This is too soon, her caption continued. I wish this never happened and we could just wake up and go surf together tomorrow morning. Despite the devastating loss, Isabella found solace in knowing that her father departed while pursuing his greatest passion. She thanked him for imparting invaluable life lessons and being a constant pillar of support. Also, she shared that although his loss was devastating, she was happy to know that her father died doing what he loved the most. Michaela Jones' legacy lives on through his iconic surfing shots and unforgettable moments on the waves. 
He was not just a surfer, he was an artist who painted breathtaking masterpieces with every ride. Just look at all the guys on tour still surfing into their 40s. I've got plenty of years left. <laughs>